As we continue on discussing the introductory principles of pharmacology, we're going to talk about the relationship between the dose of a drug and the observed response. So the dose of the drug and the reserved observed response can be simple or it can be complex. Simple in vitro studies, in petri dishes and certain things when we isolate certain enzymes and have pure substances and can in a really controlled environment, but it's more complex in, viv in vivo studies or clinically with patients. So here is a graph of the drug effect versus the drug concentration. And we have this term here, EC50. We've already talked about this. But the, just as a reminder, the EC50 is right here, the concentration of the drug that is needed to get half of the drug effect. So that's kind of that concentration. That's what EC50 is. There's another concept that's, that has similar uh, similarities between the EC50 is the KD. And the KD is the equilibrium disassociation constant. And that, that represents the concentration of free drug at which half of the maximal binding is observed. So let's say we have a thousand receptors. The KD represents what is the drug concentration when 500 of those receptors 500 of those receptors are have the ligand have that drug attached to them and the receptor bound drug so that's the KD right there so we're going to talk about the receptor effector coupling and spare receptors so when we have uh, we're talking about an ion channel here and some you know ligand comes binds right here to this spot here and then when that ligand binds it opens up this channel and in this case sodium is allowed to go straight through the ion channel and so if I have six receptors let's say I have you know these these represents receptors receptors these rece these represent six receptors here if I bind this ligand here to one receptor then the concentration will go up one. So here is receptor and effect. So if I bind one receptor, then it goes up a proportional amount. If I bind two receptors, it goes up another it goes up kind of proportional. So you can kind of see this line here. This is not exact, but just to give you an idea some ligands or some receptors when you bind one ligand it has an effect and it does a certain job and it's kind of proportional as you go up you know one or two or three receptors then you go up a certain effect and it's not it's not exponential it's just a kind of a straight line but then there's receptors like the G protein coupled receptors that we're going to talk about when they when one signal comes in and binds to this receptor here what that does this is a G protein there's three little parts to it this is one class or one type of G protein but the G protein will then well it's actually attached up here but it will come over and it will attach to this uh, receptor and it gets hydrolyze or GT or a GTP rather gets attached onto this and then what happens is the activated G protein then causes intracellular or inside the cell these second messengers as they call them to to be activated and so one receptor um, corresponds to like maybe 16 different other different little molecules. So one receptor turns into 16 signals. Rather here, one, one receptor kind of does one little effect and then another receptor you get double the effect and then how many receptors you activate equals how much effect you get. Here, one receptor could do a whole lot of work or one ligand binding to this G protein can 
increase the signal dramatically. And so we see here more of a sigma or an exponential curve here. And so if one if one uh, uh, receptor is activated, then that produces, you know, in this example, 16 other little messengers that then go out and do more. So it, it, it gets bigger, the problem gets bigger faster with these type of receptors. And here, the spare receptors, these are spare receptors. So let's say, let's say you need, let me just give you an example here. So let's say you need five receptors um, out of 10, out of 10 receptors, and that, uh, so five receptors equals max effect. So five receptors, I only need to like activate one, two, three, four, five, okay? And then when I activate five receptors, that will lead to max effect. So why is there this receptor here? Well, it's for checks and balances. If, you know, let's say this receptor gets taken out. You know, let's say this this corresponds to the max effect is cardiac output. And let's say you have six receptors on your heart and when they're stimulated, that equals the max cardiac output. Well, what happens if something happens where one receptor gets taken out or some kind of drug um, some antagonist binds to this receptor, well you still have an extra receptor so you can still reach max effect by having spare receptors in case a drug or some other problem inactivates one of your receptors you still have the capacity to reach max effect. So that's an important concept that we'll talk about. Okay, so let's say we have the agonist alone. Okay, so this talks about, this slide is about competitive and irreversible irreversible antagonists. So in the first um, line here, the first curve, we have the agonist concentration on this on the this axis and then you have the agonist effect. So as you build the concentration of the agonist, like in the last video we talked about, you have a certain potential. You have a certain max. This is max max effect here at the very the very 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 top so as you add concentration to it well you're only going to go up a certain amount at this at this rate for example well if you have a competitive if you so let me just say here if you have a pot and you add five yeah let's add just five little red dots and they need to bind with this receptor. They just need to bind up with this receptor. And then you come along and you throw a competitive antagonist. So let's say you, say you throw five of these guys in here. Then you, these green guys are competing with these red guys to kind of bond to this kind of receptor or this magnet here, if you will. If these are metal metal ions or metal molecules and this is a, a magnet here then five then they then the red guys and let's say the red guys are the good guys and the green guys are the bad guys you want the good to win right and so but these bad guys are now interfering with the chances of these red guys matching up with this magnet here so that's kind of the same analogy with how agonists plus a competitive antagonist work. And this is the Shields equation here. And this gives you this new concentration. This gives you a formula that you can use for this new concentration, how to calculate this new concentration that is needed to kind of correspond with this point, with the agonist and the competitive antagonist. So, uh, and that's kind of a competitive antagonist. So as we kind of turn to the non-competitive antagonist or the irreversible antagonist, you can see that by increasing the dosage here, as I increase the concentration over on this side, it kind of can overcome this competitive antagonist effect. But on this side, you know, if I have 
you know, if I have another box here and I have, you know, five green here, and then I have five more here, well, these non competitive antagonists, what they'll do is they'll come down here and they'll bind to this site. So then the green guys have less of a chance of binding on these other sites. There's not enough room. So that's kind of the same analogy that you can kind of extrapolate to this scenario is that when you have just a plain agonist alone, it does a certain effect. But then when you have the non-competitive antagonist uh, attached to the receptor within well, these agonists, they can't, they can't initiate the, the event as well as they could have. So let's say I have the example of the car wash. And I have cars coming in this bay and I have cars coming in this bay to get their car wash. Well, let's say only red cars, this car wash is only for red cars. And let's say the average rate is, uh, you know, five cars per hour. That's how many cars this car wash can do, is five cars per hour of the red cars. Well then, let's say white cars come in here. White cars come in and they start getting in the line here. They start getting in the line here and so now these white cars are messing up the capacity of this car wash to do five red cars per hour. And so that's kind of what this uh, this example here is with the competitive antagonist. These white cars are now competing with these red cars to get inside this car wash. The same thing over here, but let's say there's there's two bays, right, for these cars to go get their car wash. Well, let's say this non-competitive antagonist, let's say a big semi truck. Let's say a big semi truck comes in and he gets jammed in here. So he completely takes out this bay. So now you only have one bay to do car washes. So your rate or your effect will be severely dis diminished. Next we move to partial, partial and full agonists and chemical antagonists. So partial agonist is what we've talked about previously, but just here's here's another example of it, is that partial agonist, it only produces a partial effect. It's not, the response is not 100%. It's anywhere from, you know, 0 0.0001 to 0 0.9999. You know, that's a partial agonist. It doesn't produce the full effect. And the full agonist right here it produces the full effect and can reach the max response. Very simple concept and we talked about that previously. The thing that we haven't talked about is chemical antagonists. And so what chemical antagonists are is like let's say for example uh, protamine, protamine is a drug and it's a protein that is positively charged at physiological pH and it can be used clinically to counteract the effects of heparin which is an anticoagulant that is negatively charged. So you can probably see where I'm going with this. If I have a blood vessel here and I have a positive and a negative charged atoms or, or molecules rather well then what's going to happen is that they're, the they're going to bond together. These guys are going to stick together these guys are going to stick together and then it's going to become inactive so you're going to have an inactive molecule and that's it so we'll see you in the next video